Hello, gents. On this episode of Wrench, we are going to embark on a massive uh, garage upgrade. Well, this is a fun day. It's always fun when we get giganto packages in the mail. Right down there is a couple of quick jacks. So I met these guys at SEMA and they were super excited about the project and what we're doing over here. And so they said, why don't you try out a pair of our quick jacks, which I'm friggin' psyched about. Now quick jacks are basically a portable lift in your garage like kind of like a real four poster kind of lift, but without all the let's drill into concrete and make a giant four post. Now, will these go like overhead, like a four post lift? No, of course not. However, I hope to be able to get them high enough where I can scooch a Porsche engine, or in this case, a Subaru engine under the car. I'm gonna have this thing ready for paint sooner than later, and I'm gonna need to have the engine in and out, in and out, in and out. To have something where I can just like raise the whole car really quickly and stick it underneath, is awesome. So let's get this thing unboxed and see how it all fits together. Okay, we are fully unboxed here and we've got the main power unit here. We've got obviously the jacks themselves. Kind of cool, they have wheels on the end so you can just lift one end and roll them around your garage, which is awesome. All the appropriate hosage and a bunch of fittings. It comes with some thread locker and a couple of like fitting elbows, which I think are the first things I have to do. A bunch of these other fittings as well. And a really nice like step-by-step -step guide on how to connect everything. Okay, here we are. What I've just done is put a bunch of fittings on the end of hoses. So now we've got to pressurize these cylinders. So I've got my little Ryobi air compressor here. So these things want to be between 40 and 50 PSI. So I will give them a quick juice up and see what the next step is. That's it. Done. Oh, these are juiced up. I've got a bit of hydraulic fluid on this motor. I hope everything's okay with it. That'd be a bummer if I had a leak somewhere. I think we're about ready. Okay, so a bit of a hitch in my giddy up. I did not expect to have to fill this thing with hydraulic fluid, but you can use automatic transmission fluid. I literally have no idea why I have this, but I have two bottles of this Valvoline full synthetic automatic transmission fluid. So we're gonna fill the reservoir and I guess that'll be it. I guess the whole system will be sealed after that and it'll pump the hydraulic fluid through the cylinders, through the hoses, and uh, you know, I guess we're quick jacked. So the reservoir required more fluid than I actually have. So Mr. Ben, you wanna take a walk, buddy? I'm gonna take the dog for a walk to the local gas station and see if they have a bit more. You wanna go for a walk? Yeah, yeah, you do. You wanna pee on some things, huh? Yeah, you do, he does. Cool. Dog has walked, fluid is acquired. Let's finish this bad boy up. So I, I fell prey to one of those Instagram ads and I ended up buying one of these LED headband things. Um, pretty awesome. This thing's great. Really good for working in the garage, under things. It just goes on your head. I'll show you in a second, let me turn it off. So it's just like a little strip and then it's got a little light here on the side as well. And uh, so far so good, it's pretty good. Uh, anyway, let's uh, bang this thing out. Oh, it's red, nice. Okay, so there's a bleeding procedure that has to happen before you can use these. So I have to hook up the motor, hook up each jack and then put them on the rubber blocks that are supplied with the kit and then raise and lower the jacks a few times while I loosen the bleed screw. So that's gonna force the hydraulic fluid through the whole system, the stuff I just put in, and pressurize things until the entire system is sealed. 
two tunnels, one short. Presumably it's pumping uh, fluid. Hey, hey! Awesome. Okay. They want you to do this like three times, up and down, just to pressurize, I guess. All right, so I guess we're looking for air to start coming out of this cylinder. So air comes out, then like a little bit of fluid. Goose this thing again. Okay, so third one, we loosen this, and then All right, we're just getting fluid now. I think we're bled. All right, so that's not good. All of my fittings are leaking, so I've got some cleanup to do, and I gotta figure out what's going on here. Well, that is a bit frustrating. I cannot seem to prevent the fittings from leaking right now. So I think what I'm gonna do is disassemble the hoses, clean everything, put new thread locker on and then let them sit overnight and hopefully that creates a seal. So if that doesn't work, I'm not really sure. Maybe use some thread tape or something like that, uh, but we'll see in a second. Welcome back, a couple days later, I had to give the thread sealant a little bit of time to dry, in this case 24 hours, and we had a ton of rain yesterday so I couldn't work on it. So after 24 hours of thread sealant, I have made a conclusion. The thread sealant sucks. Don't use it. I went on YouTube and looked for Leaky Quick Jack and they have a video on this. They only put the thread sealant out because people weren't applying Teflon tape the correct way on the threads. So when you're doing Teflon tape, you just have to wrap it that way. You wrap it righty tighty like you would be tightening and that way it keeps the tape on the threads, doesn't bunch up and doesn't, in this case, send some of the tape down into the filter, whatever the hell is clogging up that people are calling Quick Jack for. So I redid everything. I Teflon taped all of the connections and then I rebled the system. So now I think I'm where I was before all these shenanigans started. And I think I can actually try to jack the car up now. My current question is which direction I should do this in. I'm thinking that I might reverse it so that the arms kind of go up this way, or rather they go up this way and the car kind of goes to the back, but I don't know. Um, maybe I'll just shove them underneath and, and uh, see what happens. I think every corner is gonna have a small block and a big block underneath. I got these to sit on the seams because this car doesn't, I mean, it has jack points, but ideally if you can jack it up on a seam, that's a good thing. Um, I don't know, I guess we'll try it this way first and see what happens. And then uh, if it doesn't work, we'll go the other way. Seems like a good plan. These things have like a little ball bearing that locates a, um, a notch that you guys can't see, but there's a little notch on this. You gotta make sure that the notch is located with the ball bearing, and then you are good to go. Super easy to connect once you got it dialed. And then I will raise it a little. We'll see what happens. Let's quickly jack. Encouraging so far. Okay, we have lift off. Okay, guys, it's pretty high. It's like legit high. Let me measure this. Okay, with the pads underneath, two feet from the very pan, 
But on a Porsche, the important part is how much space we have here for the engine. So I think I'm gonna pull this bumper. It looks like tons of space. Yeah, looks like tons of space. This is pretty legit, guys. That's a, that's a lot of space, man. Like, from this edge, let me see, uh, from this edge here, yeah, we'll get the bumper off, but it looks like I have like three, four feet. As long as I can get this thing with the uh, air intake in without having to take the air intake off, that would be beautiful. That would be absolutely beautiful. But this is what it looks like. Alexa, garage left on. There we go. The light. That's what it looks like underneath. Looks like it's holding really well. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, it's like a little house under there, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty sick. I've not had anything like this. So this is really pretty awesome. Okay, quick check, I see you, I see you. Now, do I have confidence to be under here working yet? No, <laughs> but, but uh, I don't know. I probably will at some point once I see the car doesn't collapse. Probably leave it overnight or something. Make sure that uh, it's, it's holding and, and everything. But let me get this rear bumper off really quick and we'll see what kind of distance we have here and then see what kind of distance I have there and we could be good to go. I'm just gonna give this a quick measure. 30, it's called 33 and a half. Oh, by a mile, 37. Yes, that is great news, man. Do you know how much better that makes your life if you're a Porsche person? The fact that you don't have to go through all the rigmarole of getting your car up high enough to get your engine out. You can just hit the button and then you've got it. That is huge, that's worth the price of admission by itself. Uh, all right, so that's it, guys. That is a quick jack install. I could not be a happier camper. I am so stoked that this thing will fit an engine underneath without doing anything. That is just a gigantic upgrade in my life. So thank you to Quick Jack for the Quick Jack. Just to reiterate, this is the Quick Jack 5000 TL. And it's great for my 69 911. It would be great for your 911 if you happen to have one. And uh, that's all I can say. This is going to be a nice looking 2022 with a nice soul Quick Jack in the garage. As always, thank you guys for watching and uh, we will see you next time.